Amen. Praise God. <clears throat> We're going on to Zechariah's prophecy. And it's another prophecy where the prophet encourages the builders, you know, lifts them up. Because even though the foundation was laid, of course they had opposition again, and the work went dormant. Now think about that. What's happened in the building of the church now? There's been times, come on. Yeah. Yep. Foundation was laid. Now think of it, Martin Luther, right? Foundation was laid. Things went along. And then God moved again. And the walls started to be built. Which is what? The second day, isn't it? Pentecost. So what's God doing now? That's right. He's putting a roof on the building. And then all the finishing touches on the inside. He's laying out the gold, the silver. Come on. He's bringing about... The Feast of Tabernacles. I'm going to read a little bit here. Zechariah likewise prophesied words of encouragement to Zerubbabel and the remnant who labored on the town. In what way would the Lord encourage the builders of this colossal task that lie before them? Well, the Lord would give the prophet a vision that would explain the meaning of their success, how helpless they were. How would the Lord encourage them? So Zechariah looked. What did he see? Did he see mountains of stone, timber, and mortar? Huge labor battalions marching down from Babylon to help them? Great machines to aid in their seemingly impossible task? Yeah. Answer's no. He didn't see that. He would have liked to have seen that, wouldn't he? Come on. But see, that would have been a man. He looked. Behold, a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lampstands therein and two olive trees by it. A very simple illustration, and meaningless perhaps to many. Two olive trees pouring their oil into a candlestick. Zechariah himself did not know the meaning of it, so God gave him the interpretation. I'm going to go to Zechariah 4. We're going to read the chapter. Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is awakened out of his sleep. You ever been awakened by God? In the middle of the night? And he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I am looking, and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps and with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl, the other at the left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, what are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what these are? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. For so long, man has tried to build a church. You know, the good ideas, the reasoning, this program, that program. And all we really have to do is rely on the Spirit of the Lord. Man doesn't build the church. God does. The Spirit of the Lord builds the church. Yeah, man will build an edifice. That's about it. Yeah. But will the Lord fill it? What's the word say? About building in vain. That's it. They labor in vain because they're laboring it out of their own good ideas. And most of the time it's labor out of the flesh. God idea. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Things like that too. And you know, what the church has to do today is just rely on the Spirit of the Lord. We need to have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even more now, today, than ever. Because everything out there is distracting us. You got this dumb virus, you know, that people are going crazy about. You had this, these riots in the street. You yeah. have Black Lives Matter, you have Antifa. All these things are bringing, you know what they're doing to a lot of people? Bringing about a spirit of depression. 
Don't you see it? Fear. You see, fear, fear, and depression. fear and depression. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. And I tell you, I've seen it in Christians. A fear. What's God always say to us? Fear not. Fear not. You know? Even when I find myself starting to get anxiety, I just go back to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on this dumb understanding. But you see, God was telling Zechariah, man's not going to build this temple. I'm building this temple. It's by my spirit. My spirit's going to make the things happen. Because if man does it, what? He labors in vain. That's it. Verse 7. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you should become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple. His hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the day of small things? Hmm. I love that verse. Who has despised the days of small things? Yeah. You know, doesn't most things start small? How did this church get founded? I heard it was in a house meeting, right? Yeah. In Irene's house, this church got founded. And it did what? It grew from small things. All right. Amen. But look what God does. Look what God does if you allow him to work in his manner by his spirit. Look what happens. No, no. How many years? 35? 35, Sister Fran? All of that. Yeah, all of that. And yeah. Some. And you know something? God's not done yet. Oh, no. not, God, not, God is not done with this house. I feel in my spirit. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm feeling my spirit. He's got a... I won't say a big party, but he's got a big revelation coming in this house. Mm -hmm, a good one. Thank you, Danny. Yeah. yeah. No. Say that again. Who stops? We stop. Yeah. We get comfortable where we're at. Yeah. See, God doesn't want us complacent. But you know what the sad truth is? Just like in the building of this temple, only 50,000, a remnant, a remnant yeah. came back. And the rest of them stayed in Babylon. See, they were comfortable in confusion. Yeah. They liked it. They had their house. Okay? They had their sheep. They had their cattle. Yeah. Listen, look at these crazy people. 50,000 of them. Look at their marching off to to a land that doesn't even exist anymore. There's no temple, there's nothing there, everything's torn down. Yeah. What are these nut, nutty people gonna do? Well, I'm gonna tell you something. Every time God moves in the church and goes in a direction, he always has a remnant to follow. And the rest of them, and you've seen it through history of the church, say, look at a bunch of idiots. What are they Born doing, are they whack? Yeah, yeah, denomination, yeah. See, we take who we are and move on with it. Yeah. I take my baptism. I take my being filled with the Spirit. I take my knowledge of the kingdom and of some ship. But that's not the end of it. We're moving on. We're moving on to a, just a greater, what I say, I don't know, can I say level? We're moving up to a greater level in yeah. God. Or it's like to say we're going higher. A higher step each time. And don't, you know something? You're going to get persecuted for it. Don't think you're not. When you look at the example of this book and these prophecies and what happened to them, they were persecuted. Each time they started to build, as soon as that foundation would lay, they came against them. And now with the building, go ahead, building the walls. We see it all around us. Every time God does something, every time there's a move of God, every time he moves on a people, every time a people are pressing in, there's always opposition. Yeah. Always. 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 Mm -hmm. And sometimes the building stops. Why is that? 
They can't, you're right. Yep. That's what you have to press in and build the harder. That's it. What's the word say? My people perish. Yeah. 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 But aren't you glad we have it? For who is the spies? Yeah, go ahead. You know, sometimes you read and you can't remember where it was. But anyway, I'll just, yeah, paraphrase it. So I don't even know. I thought it was an Isaiah, but I don't know. It was talking about a remnant. And it was talking about out of, um, oh, my God, Abraham. The Lord told him that his seed would be like the sands of the sea and the stars in the sky and everything. But he said, there's only a remnant. You know, and you look around, and there's only a remnant that will be saved because people don't want. They don't want to give in to God. And you look around the world, and so what is a remnant? What is a remnant? How many is a remnant? We were talking about this the other day. You know, he said that he died for all men, mm -hmm. but not all men we'll accept it. are going right, to, right, accept it and give their life. But he did say, he talked about a remnant. So how much is a remnant? It's the little flock. So, you know, when you start thinking and you look at the world, and every, you're, you're a little, just little compared to the world, little in flesh, but great in spirit. And if we ever can keep that before us, you know, there will be that remnant. And we are, I believe we are that, a part of a that part remnant. Of it, yeah. You know, we have to really stop and think of the privilege that we have that God did see something in each one of us that he could fulfill a purpose and a plan for our lives, you know? And it, when I was thinking about that the other day, it's a remnant. That's not a lot. No. no, but that's all God needs. Yeah. Look at Gideon. And it's just, it's so amazing. So in what I feel, I feel really what God wants to do at this time is he wants to manifest that remnant. Mm -hmm. we, we know all about this. We have it here. It's like the pastor said, we have it here. We need to have it here. When we have it here, we can walk it out. We can become what God wants us to be. Because as long as it's in our mind, and as long as we know these things in our mind, but it doesn't get to our heart. It's just knowledge. Right. So I believe even in Christ Life Fellowship, what the Lord really wants us to do is it's not, it can't be in the mind anymore. And I life. love what Ronnie said about the deposit the other night, because that's what, each one of us have a deposit. Yeah. It isn't something new. It's now, guess what? We don't have our pastor up there, our father, and he was a father in the word that, you know, he just would feed us and feed us. It's almost like that eagle. Yeah. She just would feed them and feed them. And then one day she had to push him out. And we're, we really just got pushed out. Now it's time where the rubber meets the road, and now what are we going to do with it? It can't be up here anymore. We have to get in there, and we have to find it for ourselves. You know what we're going to do? We're going to enter the promised land. Well. It's true. You know, I mean, if you guys look, even in Revelation chapter 12, the man-child company is a remnant. It's not the whole church. Because the whole church goes into the wilderness. And the man-child does what? Feeds them. Feeds them, yeah. Takes care of them. You've got to believe in your hearts that you're part of that company. You have to just... That's where it is. You know, I said, Ronnie's right about deposit, because I was going there about deposit. Every one of these workers had a job to do. Every one of them had a calling on their lives to do something. Every one of them. Did they sit in the pew and do nothing? Uh-oh. Every person in this room and every person that's in this church that's not even here today has a purpose and a calling in God. Are you fulfilling it? Before you, before you can get a deposit, you have to open up an account. That's right, yeah. With God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah 
you have to give your all. What happens when you make the decision to go down in the waters? You know what you're doing? You open that account because you're killing yourself. You die to self. You die. That old man is dead. And he is dead. No, don't want to resurrect him. You know, the, you know what the truth is? You really can't resurrect him. Because when God kills something, it's dead. If we could see... Yeah. Pastor Tim might even feel it when he's putting somebody down in the water and coming up. He might feel that little spiritual thing. If we could really see in the spirit what happens when somebody goes down in that water, we'd go, whoa! Because God cuts that away, just like that. It's gone. That's what we need to believe. The old man is truly dead. All we decide to do, Tim, is live in the flesh sometimes. Isn't that true? We just live in the flesh instead of living in the spirit. Because what did he just tell Zachariah? Not by power, it's not by man's power, not by man's might, by my spirit, saith the Lord. The only way we're going to grow, the only way we're going to become what God wants us to be, if we let the fullness of his spirit lead us, guide us, and we go, yes, Lord. Verse 11, then I answered, said to him, what are these two olive trees at the right of the lampstand at its left? And I further answered and said to him, what are these two olive branches that drip into the receptacles of the two gold pipes from which the golden oil drains? Then he answered me and said, do you not know what these are? Every time he does that. <laughs> and I said, no, my Lord. And he said, these are the two anointed ones who stand beside the Lord of the whole earth. Hello, anointed ones. Now we'll get into it here because he covers it in here really good. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hand shall finish it. We read that. And thou shalt know the Lord of the hosts has sent me unto you. For who has despised the day of small things? Here's a good sentence from the author. Child of God, remember these words. God has pledged his word that his temple shall be finished. Let us never lose that vision. It's easy to get distracted by what's going on in your own life and by what's going on out there that we take our eyes off the vision of what God's doing. See, our vision needs to be on the church. It needs to be on God and what God's doing. Not just in this house, but in his body. Yeah, the whole family of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't know. How do you know? <laughs> it, really, you have to ascend to such a high level, if, if you're going to be a, a, a successful Christian, if I can say it that way, God expects you to, if, if he says put on the mind, and that's like, I don't know if I can do that. Yeah, see, there's you know, flash, yeah. Some, sometimes, if he said, like Nikita, I don't want to, I don't want to abuse this, but what? You know, remember when Nikita... What? If, if God said, know ye not that you are the temple, okay? And at the end of the day, I can look at myself and say, oh, I guess God must have taken a day off today because this, I don't think this temple got anywhere today. I don't think so. If God, and the scripture is really clear on this, he that began a work, if he started building himself a temple in me, and I really think that uh, he ain't doing such a great job, it ain't him. That's right. Andy. It's me. I'm, I'm some of them people that are opposing the builders. They're trying to build something, and, and I'm, I'm out there saying, ah, now you're wasting your time, and blah, blah, blah. You, 
Never going to happen. Throwing yeah. a, a wrench into the works. God's going to finish. If, if we allow God to finish what he started, he's going to do a quick work. Yeah. It's going to be a really quick work. Yeah. And then we can go on to help somebody else with their building project. And there's a lot of people out there that have, you can tell, they're not bad people. How, how often do we say that? We bump into somebody. You know, they're not really bad people, but boy, are they screwed they're up. They're just lost. They're lost. Yeah, they're lost. And if you can convert somebody like that and befriend them, oh my gosh, you got yourself a good friend for, for life. Yeah. But, but if we could, instead of me looking at my, and I'm sorry, I do this. Uh, I screwed up again. You know, I messed at the end of the day, and I didn't do so great today. Or here's a good one. Uh, I know that scripture I read this morning. I knew I was going to get tested on it. And that really may be the case. But we got to stop looking at ourselves as, as failures sometimes and know that if we got God building something, he's going to do a good job. It's the vision. Yeah. And that it's roof you guys were talking about earlier, that is a very critical feature in a structure. You can spend all the money you want on what's between the foundation and the roof. But if that roof ain't right, you're going to have some serious problems. You know what's going to be left? The foundation, because right. everything else is going to crumble. Right. It's going to be right back to the, to the foundation. The yeah, two most important parts of a house are the foundation and the roof. You can work on everything else between. But if you've got a lousy foundation, a lousy roof, better get them fixed. Ooh, that'll preach. How's your foundation? How's your roof? Now you have a good roof? That's good. You know, it's like you said, Danny, on your day, the kind of day you have. And sometimes I won't have a good day. But the fact is, there's only two men on the planet. We know it. Adam and Christ. Choose this day. I'll say, who are you going to be? <laughs> you choose. Yeah, you choose every day. Who are you going to be today? And a lot of times, I just fall into the Adam trap. Come on. You have to. But you know, some, sometimes I don't agree with God. That's my problem. Right. If he's destined you to be Christ, you agree with him, you'll be Christ. If you don't agree with him, you'll be the other. You'll be, you'll be Adam. Yep. Yep. So we got to be, well, we got to be real careful when we say these things because we open up Pandora's box that you can just choose. Yes, there's application. That's what I mean. But if God doesn't choose it in your life, just like, just like in the doing stuff. God doesn't tell you to do it, you better back off. Right. Sit your can down and stay there and be quiet and wait till God moves. You'll pay the price for being out. There, That's it. There's a balance. And, and hear me say it all the time, isn't it amazing, Adam, not act like Christ, but the new man can act just like the old man. Right. That's what I say. It's our choice. It's our cho it's our choice. See, God's yeah, already made the choice for us. Very careful yeah. on how we do this because what happens is we get back to where we think I'm okay. No. Yeah. And take heed. The scripture says, take heed. Yeah. Because what? He gives grace to the humble. Humble. Mm-hmm. The way up, you can talk very well. That's yeah. yeah, the opposite. It's, it's an oxymoron. It's, yeah. it's contrary to everybody else. We know the Bible says, God says, you got to rise. But the only way to arise is you got to go down. On your knees. It's, it's, you're talking about the foundation. Do you know what's really soft? Beauty for ashes. Right. He saw a Same burnt principle. temple. Sacrifice that was no longer there, and he said, God's going to build the house. And that, uh, what? Which one's going to be greater? The one back there, or the one he's building? The ladder house. The ladder house is greater. Greater than the former. Yeah. Yeah. Amen.
That's what he said in the prophecy. The latter house shall be greater than the former. But see, everybody, even these guys, they were all looking back to Solomon's temple. Weren't they? Come on. And they were thinking this was going to be like that in their own minds. But God had something greater to say. God had something greater to build. Yeah, yeah. now he builds what? Not temples with hands. Right. But he builds it in the people. Right, exactly. No need not that you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. The man, the habitation, the place of the very Lively stones, yeah. Lively stones of God. <laughs> yep. Tim's right. You know, we are, I mean, God made the choice for us. We are a new creation. Every one of us is a new creation. But, but right. Yep, you're new. That's the qualification. Right. If you haven't been, that's the qualification to be. Mm -hmm. Yep. You need to go in the water. Water isn't a choice. Water separation. That's it. It's not a choice, it's a necessity. We can see you just look in the book of Acts. Yeah. Who can forbid them water? Yeah. Acts 10. Right? Because yeah. Peter got fooled, he thought it was one, two, three. They got filled with the Holy Ghost first. Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. It actually coincides with the two witnesses in Revelation. Yes. That same thing. Okay, where'd my glasses go? Oh, there they are. Don't tell me you don't lose your glasses. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> what a guy said to me one time. Of all the things I miss in life, it's my mind I miss the most. <laughs> That's it. I don't mind losing my mind as long as I put on his mind. <laughs> if I don't put on his mind and lose mine, I'm in real trouble. <laughs> so I'll read that again. God has pledged His word that the temple shall be finished. Let us never lose that vision. But still, Zechariah was puzzled. There were two olive trees that he saw emptying their golden oil into the candlestick. And the angel replied, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Literally, these are the two sons of oil. There it is. Sons of the anointing. House builders, yeah. It is the Moses Elijah Company and we shall discover this in the next chapter, which is the last chapter, by the way. It is a company of overcomers who shall go forth in the day of the Lord, working all manners of signs and wonders and miracles in the name of the Lord, and nothing shall stand against them. What's the book of Revelation say? Weren't these two witnesses killed? What happened? They laid open in the street. And they said, ha, we finally got them. We got them. We got the church. We put the church down. That's what the world's going to think. That's right. That's right. But what happens to them? I think my book says they rise. They rise in the power of the Lord. The world hasn't finished you. No way. We arise and shine. We arise and shine who he is. I'll tell you a secret, and you guys already know it. It's the world that's finished. Mm -hmm. That's what the end of the book says. Pastor Dave, you say that. He says, I don't care what you say, the end of the book says we win. Yeah. Make sure you're part of that we, the anointed we. <laughs> that's it. Two things. Remember what Jesus said? It's my Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Yeah. Oh, little flock. Or he might say, oh, little flock first. Yeah. It's the same thing, right? The little flock is going to get the kingdom. 
It's the ones, that little flock of sheep, come on, that little flock whose heart's desire is to do nothing but follow the shepherd. At every turn, at every turn. This is the work of the Spirit of God, the oil of the Spirit flowing through them. That is the secret of their power. <laughs> That's the secret of all our power. If the Spirit doesn't flow through us and work through us, then what are we working out of? Yeah. Restoration of the walls. The book of Ezra and Nehemiah cover two periods of restoration. Neither Ezra nor Nehemiah were present at the rebuilding of the temple, but came many years later. Ezra to teach the people the laws of God and Nehemiah to rebuild the walls and the gates of the city. Now think about that. You know, we read these chapters in a book and we think, you know, the temple started to be built and they went and restored and boom, 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 it was done. No. Many years later they came. Yeah, quite a long process to build the temple. You know, we're so used to seeing these buildings go up in a year or two. You know, oh yeah, oh, you can build a temple in no time. No. Now we don't have modern equipment. Now we don't have things like bulldozers and big cranes. What did they have? Yeah. 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 That's it. You know what they had? They had the Spirit of the Lord. That's why they got it done. They had the Spirit of the Lord leading and guiding them in every step. And they had the encouragement of the prophets. So we read, all that could hear with under, oh, here it is. All that could hear with understanding assembled together as one man into the street that was before the water gate. While Ezra the priest read the law of God from morning till midday. Boy, we're so antsy after one o'clock in the afternoon and oh, I'm getting hungry. I want to, yeah, I want to have something to eat. I want to go to uh, Applebee's at 99 or Bernie's. Oh. Think about it. They stood there. He read the word. Probably what? What's morning for them? 9 o'clock? 6 o'clock, right, when sunrise. Thank you, sunrise. So six hours, six hours. They that's midday? No. Yeah, but it said till midday. Yeah, yeah, midday, yeah. So it was, it was, yeah. So either six hours or nine hours, they stood there for the reading of the word. You think any of them got out and walked out? I doubt it. No, no. You know why? They were a hungry remnant. They, yeah, they were a people who were hungry for the word of God. And you know something? Yeah, it sustained them. It fed them. I don't think they were hungry for, for fleshly food because they were getting the heavenly food. They were getting the manna of the word fed to them. And I'll tell you, most people can't sit 45 minutes without getting bored. That's just a fact. This is the first day of the seventh month, the month of the Feast of Tabernacles. So they read the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them the under, to understand the reading. This is the hour of revelation and spiritual understanding. Now, the Spirit is speaking to the churches, but only those with ears to hear shall understand what is spoken. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, and only men whose minds have been quickened by the Spirit shall be able to give sense on the other hand, or understand the reading on the other. He that has a hear, ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Mm -hmm. Do you have a spiritual ear? I need to tune mine a little better. I won't lie. I need to tune it. What's God say? What's the Lord say to this day? And you know what it starts? It starts when you wake up in the morning. Tune your ear right away. Tune your ear. 
until you there. And guess what? Let it go all day. Mm -hmm. No, up closer, that's all. Yeah. Is that first spell? Okay. Well, think of the spiritual sense. Cause when, I'll, um, when I sit there, like, I can sit there and listen to the Lord by shutting off, my, uh, sh shutting off my, my hearing aids. Just to, because that's, I mean, that's what we have to do. We, we have to shut off Our every minds. sound around us and just, just sit there and listen and hear nothing the but the sound of the Lord. Lord. You know, hear his word. And that's, I mean, that's what I try to do. And I, I, I think I'm blessed in that sense because when I want not to hear anything, I can just shut off my hearing aids. That's it. I was just going to say that. I can't shut off my mind. You know, how many times have you been either on your knees or praying or how you pray or sit in your chair or whatever, and you're there and you're praying, you're listening to the Lord, dink, there comes the thought. Dink, there comes the next one. Okay, I'll concentrate, I'll concentrate. Dink, there comes the next one. Shut up. Shut up. You know, you got to tell it to shut up. But you know what's something? I believe tuning the ear is our job. We need to discipline ourselves to tune our ears to hear what God has to say. Shut these minds down long enough to spend some time with God. You know, yeah, spending time with God isn't just putting out your prayer list every morning. I mean, it's a good thing praying for people. Don't get me wrong. I'll never say it's not. Have to. Yeah, it's part of, part of our job. I'll say job. But it's more than that. You know, when you're done, it's... it's Getting that ear to hear, God, what do you want today? What is your vision for this day, for my life, for my family, for my church body? What's your vision for us together? Yeah. Yeah. It's called soaking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Soaking. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. We got to be... We got to be that dry sponge that just allows the full liquid of the spirit to just be absorbed into us. That we become that wet, full wet anointing of God. And then guess what? We need to squeeze that punt sponge and pour that anointing out on others. No matter who you meet that day. Just be good to them. You know? Isn't there people you don't want to be good to? Come on. Come on. We all have the person that just rubs you wrong. Oh, the fivefold ministry. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Change. Yeah. This is what Brother Stephen told me a long time ago when he said he looks at people differently than he used to. And it stuck with me because... I try to maintain what he told me by looking at everybody as a potential son of the Most High God. That's right, no matter who they are. No matter who they are, who this they person are. can potentially be a son of God. Uh, I'll make a confession, you guys. I really had a problem with homosexuals. Really bugged me. You're an abomination. I never said that. Believe me, that's what I thought in my mind. No, they're lost. Yeah, they're just lost. I've changed my heart on that. Do I agree with it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And I tell them in the kindest way possible if they ever approach me on it. Yeah. But the thing is, I don't look at them like that anymore. I look at them as just being lost and need a savior, because a savior changes everything. If you allow him to, the savior changes everything. So I don't look at them any differently than anyone else yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know? Which I think is a change in my heart. Because I was pretty bad at that. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to share my thought on that subject. 
God doesn't make us perfect. None of us. Right. We're made in the image of perfection. But we all have something that God doesn't like. We all have something that needs to change. And I believe that that includes spirits that we have attached to us. Homosexuality is a spirit. Yes. But so is another form of perversion or, or alcoholism or any addictions or any phobias or fears. God has given us all something to overcome. And it, I believe, that he has allowed that spirit to permeate certain people that he might get the glory when they have overcome. But we all fall short of perfection. And we all have issues to overcome. Some are blatant. And some are hidden. Some are hidden, yeah. I think most are hidden. Yeah, right. We all have them. Yeah. You know something? And we keep, I don't know, pushing them away or denying. What we need to do is let our hearts be open and let the Spirit of God change us. Yeah. Give it over. Not try to hang on to it, but give it over. Until Love what? The sinner and hate the sin. Until he gets the glory because you overcame. That's right. That's right. By the spirit of God. The only reason you overcome anything is the spirit of God. There's no other, there's no other way to overcome anything. Yeah. You can say, oh, I beat this, I beat that. No, you didn't. Because yeah. it's always there until God takes it. That's right. When the spirit of God enters in and takes it. What's this word of the words? He who is free is what? Free indeed. But that's only by the Spirit. It's not because you said so. <laughs> hey, I'm free. Let me see you tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. That was second, though. Amen. Next week, the people in their place. So God's going to put you in your place. Or the last. <laughs>